Like one night I laid down and like MLK I had a dream but I woke up with the vision. I developed some discipline and now I think before I make my decisions. I can't move on my emotions, they're like a roller coaster. And like mama said, boy if you don't listen, I told you it's a war out here and it's only for those that think like soldiers. And if you don't want to fight back, they got the ground that will hold you. Yeah, we're perplexed with adversity and we're challenged with temptations. But guys, girls, if school is the only place that you're being taught, then I feel sorry for your education. But see, it's easy to play the victim when you've been victimized, and I'm not making light of it. Just want you to open up your eyes and realize that you have to get up and take the prize. They won't give it. And this is life. And you can't die until you live it. I hear so many people talk about, it's the white man, it's the brown man, it's the blue man. I'm like, yo, it's you, man. You gotta stop being an ostrich and pull your head out of the sand and get yourself together and develop a plan. And I'm sorry that your father wasn't there. I'm sorry that your mother was gone. But you can't keep laying down in your pain because this is life. And you're gonna have days that there will be a 100% chance of rain. And there is nothing worse than remembering something that you can't change. And at some day, some point, you gotta grow up and stop making excuses and be a woman or be a man. So I tell young brothers and I tell young sisters, hold tight to your dreams. And sometimes you gotta open up your mind and watch your perception will change on certain things. Because I travel around the world because my message is all about being a king and being a queen. And that is the rule of your territory, your mind, body, and soul. Because nobody can complete you until you look at yourself as being whole. And whole as a person whole as a woman, whole as a man. But so I moved to Grapevine in 96. Uh, my parents divorced, we moved to Texas, and I was, it was a huge culture shock, right? Because I moved from Mississippi and I kind of grew up all black neighborhood, you know what I mean? We had like two white kids in school. And I come to Grapevine, I'm like, oh, snap. All right, so when I was here at Grapevine, I, I played football. I was part of the 96, 98 state championship team. And uh, I went on to college. I went to Tarleton State University. Uh, I played there. I was the uh, university first four-year starter. I uh, recently had my jersey retired. I don't know why, but um, I guess I was a pretty good player. But um, anyway, when I was here, I'm going to get into my story. The guy that you see today was not the kid that was sitting in these seats. Uh, divorce, I was depressed, I was struggling with anxiety issues, I was struggling with trying to figure out who I was after the, my parents' divorce. So, behind closed doors, I was this good kid that was a, I was a great athlete, but I was a cutter. So I used to cut on myself. Um, and cutting on myself, man, and I'll share how all of this progressed, right? Because nobody knew that I was cutting on myself. So everybody just saw, oh man, that's a new uh, kid. He's a good football player, but nobody knew that I had these issues. And some of you may have issues, we all have them, and you may not feel comfortable talking about it. That's why I talk about my issues, because sometimes you'll look at people and you're like, oh, everything is perfect in their life, and that's not always the case. I'm standing before you, I didn't survive suicide, not once, but twice. 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 I wasn't successful at it. And it wasn't until I went and got some help and really realized that, you know, hey man, you got a serious problem. And it wasn't so much that I was a problem. Because see, sometimes as teenagers, right, your parents and everybody's around you make you feel like, oh, you're the problem. And sometimes there are things around you that create the problem inside of you. The hurt, the pain, the brokenness, the abandonment, feeling like, who am I? Do I even matter? Trying to fit in, and especially with social media today, man, it's tough on you guys. It's tough, especially with the young ladies. You know, you go on Instagram and you see these girls posting pictures and it look like they have this perfect body and this perfect face. And, and to be honest, man, them filters do a lot. <laughs> you know, I mean, because, you know, I, I've, I've seen, you know, I have a lot of people that follow me on social media, right? And so I'll be out 
in somewhere and somebody recognized her. Hey, you the guy that speaks to the kids about being a king and a queen. And it's like, there's a girl and she's like, oh, I follow you on social media. And she'll be like, yo, pull me up. And I'm looking at the picture and I'm looking at her and I'm like, these are two different people. <laughs> but she's put about five, six filters on that thing. You know what I mean? She's got the, you know, and then the famous behind the poles and you know, and then now it's like these girls, they take the pictures and they're looking down at the ground. They want you to see their boots or they holding a bag like this. They want you to see the bag. And I'm just like, geez, man, give it up. So it's really tough because of social media, there's so much pressure to be perfect. But that's not the reality, right? You can't be perfect. But you have to know that you was created for a reason and that you was created for, to do something. So as I'm struggling through life with this depression and struggling with trying to figure out who I was, I was broken because my parents, you know what I'm saying, were, were, were divorced. And really, football was the, really best, the, the best thing that really happened to me. As, as in the first uh, class, I talked about Coach Benefield and, and I and have the, the great opportunity now uh, having Coach Bullard in here. I mean, he was another great instrument in my life. And they were guys that really saw something in me that I didn't see in myself. And you may have somebody, you may have a teacher, you may have a coach, and you may have somebody that really sees something in you beyond what you see. And that's the great thing about adults is they have the ability to see what you don't see. Because oftentimes when you're going through high school, you feel like the whole world is against you when you're a teenager. You got all these different emotions. You got all these different issues. You're trying to fit in. You want this group to like you. You want this guy to like you. You want to hang with this group of girls. And the truth of the matter is everybody won't like you. Here's my thing. If everybody likes you and you're cool with everybody, you're a fake person. Because somebody should hate on you. Somebody should hate you because you're doing your thing. Somebody should not like you because you make good grades. Oh, who does she think she is? You know, she's on the, uh, the what is it? They still have the principal list? Or what do they call it? Honor roll? Yeah. Like, somebody should have an issue with you, man. But here's the truth of the matter. Guess who shouldn't have an issue with you? You. Nobody can make you feel bad about being you. If you have a problem with me, guess whose problem it is? It's your problem, not mine. Somebody's opinion shouldn't shape how you think about yourself. Somebody's thoughts or their perception of you because they feel that, oh, well, maybe you have life a little easy. You got both parents and you drive this type of car. Guess what? That really is not the defining factor that everything is okay. You know how many kids I've talked to that have both parents? Everything seems to be perfect on the outside, but they go home, their parents don't get along, their parents sleep in different rooms, they got to deal with the fights, the dad is abusive, the mom is physically, I mean, it's all type of crazy stuff. So that's why you got to be consumed about who you are and stop worrying about everybody else. Because this life is judged by the decision that you make. I can't drink the poison and expect you to die. What in the world? <laughs> well, Sack, I'm like, somebody drinking poison out there? <laughs> so you can't be so wrapped up in everybody else, man, and not really be wrapped up in yourself. So fast forward, right, to my second suicide and my last final attempt. You know, uh, after college, you know, I did the whole NFL thing and trying out for teams. So I finally got my opportunity, right, with the Green Bay Packers. And, I mean, everything seemed like, man, this is about to be it. You know, I come from a family of professional athletes. So in my mind, this is, you know, this is it. So I never forget I'm talking to the GM of the uh, Packers. And, you know, I just worked out and, you know, everything's going great. And I'm feeling like, man, this is about to be it. And so it's like, all right, Jay, you know, we're going to send you home, stay in shape, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, at the time, it's like I had a contract with the Arena League. So I'm doing all this stuff. And, and I graduated college. I had my degree. So I was, I was straight in my mind. But then, you know, I get this call back. They say, hey, Jay, man, we, 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 we like you, man. You, you done well. There's nothing to do. You know, we're going to go a different direction. And I was dating this girl that was really hoping that I made it because, you know what I mean, she was infatuated with this whole athlete thing. 
So when I didn't make it, of course, you know, she's getting ready to make another move. Here I am sitting here cutting on myself and taking pills. Because you know why? The issue that I didn't deal with as a teenager had now followed me into my adult life. So why am I saying this? If you have problems with you right now trying to fit in, guess what? You'll be an adult trying to do the same thing. The girl is looking for acceptance and looking for attention as a teenager. She becomes a woman that's doing the same thing and she never deal and address it with those issues. The guy that's having issue, he can't seem to keep his hands to himself. He keeps picking up things that are not his. One day he's still in an iPad, the next day he's still in a car. Things progress in life. So if you don't deal with whatever issues you have, now they will follow you. And none of these things, guess what? They don't have a color to it. They don't have a specific group to it. They don't have that, hey, we're only going to deal with this person because they are such and such, and we're only going to deal with... Um, that issue because it's, you know, they grew up in an affluent neighborhood or this kid here. Man, listen, there's so much in life that is waiting on you that is bad. But guess who decision is it to make that decision on what you're going to choose to do? There's a lot of stuff out here. There's so many distractions that you guys have. We didn't have like me. I mean, we had distraction like, you know, you had, you know, the girls, you know, you had, you know, kids who was doing bad stuff. But like now, man, social media is so powerful. So when I wrote my book for girls, right, I, I'm the only man that wrote a curriculum and I work with like girls from all over the world. Like we, we have a, a company that we virtually mentor girls and boys and I teach other adults how to work with teenagers. So people come to me on how to get through to teenagers. Believe it or not, I wrote this book because I had 30 girls in my program, white, black, Hispanic, all races. They all was dealing with issues trying to fit in. You do not know how much they were attached to their phone when they would post a picture, trying to see how many likes they get. And I had girls that would be almost in tears trying to, I only got 30 likes, and, and they're looking at somebody else's picture who's got 100 likes. And so guess what happened? The pressure to, to being like, you start off with t-shirts, some jeans. Oh, I got 10 likes. Guess I got to up, up, up the ante. Then the shirt comes off. Now it's a sports bra and jeans. Then it escalates. It's just like the guy who's taking pictures of the money. He's taking pictures of his dad's car. He just posted, oh, I'm in my new whip. Dude, that's your dad's car. <laughs> You know? <laughs> you know, the girl's taking pictures with the duck lips like, you know, and you're looking at her like, oh my God, her makeup is so awesome and she's such a cool person. But here, here's what I find, right, to be baffling at time. Is that girl usually comes to me and she's struggling with self-esteem issues. She's not as confident as you think she is. That's why you can't judge a book by its color. Because there's a lot of beautiful, pretty individuals that don't feel how you feel about them. Self-esteem, self-confidence, self-awareness. Look how that word starts off. Self. You have to do it. Because people treat you how you treat yourself. How do you feel about you? Who cares if you got 150 likes if you don't like you? Right? Doesn't matter. Who cares if you're not popular? Because it's like, you know, I get it, man, because I guess I'm in schools all the time. In high school, you like, man, I, you know, everybody wants to be popular, right? Here's the truth of the matter. When you graduate high school, the person who you thought that was most popular, that was the most like, that they're going to do this, they, they, most cases, they never really do anything. Because they wrote they rode all of their glory on their high school years, and they never do anything outside of that because the world doesn't cater to your popularity. I know that's a, I know that's a lie that social media sells you that, but it's really not about being popular. It's really about who do you think you are? How do you see yourself? Are you riding on your parents to the, to the point to where one day when it's really time to measure who you are, to what you've done, how will you be measured? What will you give back to society? 
What will you do to change society? What will you do to make a difference in your life, in your family? What will you do? Because the, the biggest challenge that you guys have as millennials, and I'm part of millennials too, I think it's 15 to 35. So I'm 33, so I have two more years to be a millennial. And I'm excited about that, whether you're excited or not. The biggest challenge that millennials have is controlling their emotions. Controlling their emotions. Everything gets you upset. Everything angers you. Everything gets underneath your skin. Oh, my teacher said this. I'm mad. Da, da, da. And I shared this story in the last um, class. So I had this girl in my uh, class. And for weeks, we've been talking about controlling your emotion and anger. And if you don't, it's going to control you. So the young lady, her mom, she, I mean, she was... Her parents had divorced and separated something, and I mean, she was struggling real hard. And so her mom took her, uh, uh, her was it a uh, notebook, tablet, like an iPad. So she gets upset, right? She gets upset, and they're wrestling, they're tussling, and in the midst of the tussling, she starts to choke her mom. To the next day, I get a call that her mom was dead. In the midst of her choking, she didn't realize how much her anger had took control of her. She ch while she was choking her mom, her mom had a heart attack and died. And I share this story is because your anger will get the best of you if you don't learn how to control it. This is life. Everything don't go your way. Somebody's not going to like you because you're white. Somebody's not going to like you because you're black. Somebody's not going to like you because you're expanded. Who cares? You won't fit into every group. You have to wake up every day and look in the mirror. Man, do I like me? Who cares if Sarah don't want me to be a part of her little clique? She don't want to go get donuts or whatnot. Cool. I go get donuts by myself. Who cares if they're like, well, you know, he's not as fast as all the other guys. You know, he's really like, he's subpar. And I mean, he, he, he wants to be a good athlete and he thinks he's the man, but he's really not the man. Who cares? But guess what? Because when you look in the mirror, you have to decide when you leave your house every day, who am I going to be? Am I going to be the same person I was yesterday? Or am I going to change every time I get around a group of people? And if nobody accepts you for who you are, I say to hell with them. Because your association is linked to your destination. You hang out with losers, you lose. You hang out with winners, you win. You hang out with people that support you and that really thinks the world of you, it's great. But if you hang out with people that allow other people to say things about you, and as I said in the last group, is that I question your friendship. I don't know what you're dealing with. I don't know what your home life is. Because everybody, as I say, the world is one big masquerade party, right? Everybody is masking something. We don't live in a perfect world. So are you going to be defined by your situation or are you going to define yourself outside of your situation? Now, I had a choice to make. And I have some friends that some people I know that have attempted suicide and they were successful at it. You know, rest their souls. But I had a choice to make. Because when Coach Benefield stopped me in the hallway one day when I was a sophomore, and had a talk with me, had several talks with Coach Bullard, had a choice to make. They couldn't make the choice for me. All they could do is present options. And all they could do is present, yo, this is what you can be, this is what you can do. And in the midst of all of that, go off to college and my mom lose her place and they were homeless about a couple of years. Had a choice to make. That either I can quit, go home, and do what? Nothing. You have a choice to make because your parents won't decide where you go in life. You will. 
You are responsible for your own success. You are responsible for your own story. Until you accept yourself, until you accept your truth, nobody else will accept it. And let me tell you something, guys. This life does not discriminate on anybody. There are people that discriminate, but life doesn't discriminate. We all are vulnerable to a tragedy happening at any time in our life. So many young people that I work with, we've had to bury. Texting and driving. You know, um, we ha ha I've had several girls pregnant. And once again, this has no specific, it's not a specific group of people. It's all teenage girls. Well, he said he loved me. Like, girl, please, you don't know what love is. Like, I mean, come on, man. You know, this is, you know, let's be real. You know, every girl, you know, feels in high school, a little boyfriend, oh, we're going to get married, and, you know, this and that. <laughs> you know, you don't know what love is. And I have so many cases where the girl says, well, I thought we were, you know, I thought he liked me, and then I come to find out he's talking to Sarah behind my back, and all of a sudden, she's, she is distraught like she is upset and all of a sudden this breakup defines the rest of her high school years off of a knucklehead that really don't even have a future or a guy makes a decision to be accepted or to do something stupid that changes his whole life Life is a game. It really is. But the strategy behind it, you better learn how to play it very quickly. And meaning that identify with who you are, guys. That way you can identify with who you are not. The problem with social media, the problem with Facebook is a perceived reality. You got people, they post all this stuff. They post the pictures. They post it like, it, it, like sometimes I'm just like some of my girls that was in my class is like, they was constantly updating their status. You know, it's like, hey, reading my book. I'm like, do you have to tell us that you're reading your book? Just read your book. Oh, I'm doing my makeup. Like, just do your makeup. Man, this thing keeps getting caught. You know. Oh, my hair is on fleek today. I'm slaying these. You know what? I'm like, you know. Or you get the girl that's like, yo, Kelly is a thought, and Kelly is right of that. Yeah. Oh, y'all know what a thought is? Y'all know what a thought is? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. You know, I said that last, I said that last class, right? And people was laughing, and I was like, yo, do not point her out, man. Don't do that. Yeah. You know, it's funny how, you know, how life changes, right? The terms changes, right? You know, because, you know, I keep up with all of the lingo and all of the, uh, you know, the different nuances that millennials have come upon. And, you know, like I'm up to date on all the emojis and all the little abbreviations of the text. And when the first time, you know, I heard the thought and, you know, I was working with these girls, it's like, yeah, Mr. J, that girl is a thought. And I'm like, a thought? It's like, what is that? That hoe over there, that hoe over there. And I'm just like, what? So, true story. So the girl comes to me, right? And she's like, she's upset. Mr. J, I need to talk to you. I said, you know, what's going on? She said, this boy called me a thought. And I was like, well, are you? <laughs> So she says, she's like, no, Mr. J, you know, like now, I mean, I don't know, is it, is it reality TV that everybody talk, clapping their hands and doing all this? Yeah, you know what I mean? She's like, Mr. J, I am not a thought. I'm trying to tell you, and I'm like, yo. I'm like, yo, son, stop with the game signs, you know what I mean? So, so I said, so the picture, the guy was calling her thought off a picture. Because I was in a school with my program, and so the girls would come, 
And of course, we got the door open, and, and the guys, you know, you know how guys are, man. They are antagonizers. So the guy comes through the door. He's like, Yeah, Mr. J. She a thought. And he walked off. <laughs> <laughs> so I said, Hey, let me see the picture, right? She said, Let me see the picture. And I kid you not, this is the picture right here the bathroom sink, right? The mirror, you already know. She's sitting up on the sink like this. <laughs> so I saw the picture. I said, looks like a thought to me. <laughs> She's upset. She's mad. She, Mr. J, I can't believe you said that. Why would you call me a thought? I said, hey, listen, if you're not selling, take down your sign. Y'all catch that by the time you're seniors. <laughs> if you, so what I was meaning was, listen, if you don't want to be treated like that, don't present that image. If you don't want to be treated like this guy who really don't care, don't give a crap about life, change what you present. And I said, listen, Shelby. I said, Shelby, sweetie, listen. You can't post these type of pictures and think a guy's going to treat you like a queen. He's not. He's going to treat you like a thought. He's going to treat you like what you're presenting. And she just couldn't get over that. And she just kept posting these pictures. And before you know it, I mean, it's just like she had such a bad rep. And she was, I was like, listen, man, you, you got to stop posting these pictures. But Shelby was a very beautiful girl. But Shelby had an issue of being accepted. And she wanted attention so bad. She wanted attention so bad. And she was caught up in this world that I'm like, yo, you don't even know these people that are liking your pictures. You don't even know these people that are sending you these DMs. You know, as, as Yo Gotti said, goes down in the DM, you know. <laughs> and I mean, I'm, I'm, from what I'm hearing, I guess it really go down, huh? My man here, he was like, yeah, it goes down. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you're not the one sending those DMs, are you? No? No? Yeah. I mean, is there any guy, the last group had a guy that says he posts selfies every day. Is there a guy here that posts selfies every day? No? All right, good. I don't know, you look like you want to raise your hand, man. No? Good. Girls, girls, I can kind of understand why a girl does it, but it, sometimes it's like overly excessive. I mean, seriously. It's like, you know, she gets her friends, I mean, because these, these kids, they bring me all type of stuff, and it's like, oh, Mr. J, did you like my picture? I'm like, yo, you just was holding a book. And you're looking away like, oh, I'm not worried about these tricks and this and that. And I'm like, you know what I mean? What? It's, and what, what, what gets me is the captions of these pictures, right? It's like she's holding her books, looking away. My mind is wandering in the sky, blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, no, you're not. You simply just turned your head when your friends were taking the pictures. Stop. You know, and then they come up to me and they take these pictures in class. Mr. J, what should I caption this? I was like, nothing is happening. It's like you, you capture pictures that are action, right? Like, you know, we'll, we'll post some pictures from this, you know, me in action or whatever, you have a caption. But here's the thing, guys. Write the caption to your own life. And that way you don't have to live through a picture. Yes, picture says a thousand words. But the result of your life and your choices says more. That way you don't have to live through Instagram. You don't have to live through Twitter. You don't have to be caught up in Facebook beef. <laughs> That's what gets me, man. It's like, you know, the, the, the Facebook beef and the, and the bullying. It's just like, it's ridiculous that everybody is trying to be popular. Everybody is trying to be famous. It's like nobody wants to be themselves or be a regular person. And I can tell you this, I really wasn't living to be famous or to be popular. Man, I just wanted to play football. B 
because that was, that was my outlet. I don't know what your outlet's, outlet is. It may be writing, it may be poetry, it may be acting, it may be film, taking pictures. I don't know what it is, but find a positive outlet. Find something that you can do outside and just kind of take your mind from everything. Journal. I started journaling in college and it was the best thing that I did. I started writing down how I felt. I started writing down the things that I was thinking. Started getting it out. Because I guarantee you, you can look beside the person you're sitting by, there's something that is going on in their life that they're dealing with that you don't have an idea or have a clue about what they're dealing with. Because when they come to school, they put on a mask. And they have to look like everything is okay. And everything is not okay. So you have to be careful how you treat one another. Because you never know what he or she is dealing with. There's a lot of kids, teenagers, right, that feels like they're going to take over the world, but they have parents that don't think so. So they have to deal with the negative influence and they have to deal with the negative message from their parents. They have to deal with the negative influence of their friends that feels that this is all that you want to be because this is where you come from. And I'm an example that you don't have to be where you come from. Because if you see where I grew up and see what I am and what I'm doing now, you couldn't match the two. And it wasn't until I realized, man, that my decisions and the choices that I made had a lot to do with where I am. Be strategic with your life. Don't treat your life like checkers. Don't jump just because there's an opportunity to jump. In chess, you have to be very strategic because every move matters. Everything you post matters. As I said in the last class, right? It's not, I mean, even in today's culture, a lot of jobs really don't, they do reference check, but most jobs that I know and most people that I know that are in human resource, the first thing they do is go to social media page to see what type of things are you posting. Are you posting things about the school, posting things about the teacher, posting things about the job? Are you posting negative images and all that different type of stuff? Because we live in a world where everything is watched. So you can post something today that may affect you five, ten years from now. That's why you got to treat your life like chess. There's times I feel a lot about a lot of different things, but I've learned how to keep that to myself. Because every situation does not warrant my response. Just because they're ignorant people don't mean I have to respond to ignorance. Because guess what? You argue with the fool, he's going to bring you to his level and beat you with experience. So guess what? You're going to be a fool with them. So you have to learn that if college is the goal, if it's doing better, whatever it is, my life has to adjust to what it is that I want to do. You can't be, you can't want to be a doctor and you hanging out with a mechanic. You can't say that, yo, I want to be treated like a lady, but every time I turn around, like, you got a different boyfriend every week. <laughs> or you can't say, man, I want to get a scholarship in sports, but you can't sing to stay in class. Great athlete, but man, he don't even know how to read. Great athlete, but he's, his character is poor. We can't depend on him at practice. Some days he shows up, some days he doesn't. He thinks he's, you know, the man. It's like, you know, one thing about life, man, we're all are replaceable at any given time. And I don't know what your story is. I don't know what your lifestyle is or what your home life is. But three things, guys, I want you to remember is for one, you got to figure out who you're going to be. That's everybody. I don't care what color you are. You got to figure it out. Because if you don't plan for your life, guess what? Life will plan it for you. And number two, you really have to become one within yourself. Sounds cliche, love yourself, but that's true. 
Because you're going to always be around some people that don't like you. And I can't stress that enough because I, I hear that so many times. The kid's like, well, he or she doesn't like me. They don't like me. This and that, man. That's going to be life. You know, I'm in mean, places I've gone. And it's funny, like, when I tell people, like, yo, where'd you go to high school? And I'm like, y'all went to Grapevine. It's like, oh, Grapevine. So that's trying to match the two, right? You know what I mean? Because, you know, let's be real. The ratio is what it is. So they're trying to match, you know. I'm like, yo, my mother moved us to Grapevine, and truly, it was the best decision of my life. Because not only did I learn how to integrate, that I learned to get along, because I grew up in Mississippi. Mississippi has a huge racial problem. Like, you would never have this in Mississippi where you have, and it's not just about the race, the racial issue between blacks. You won't have Hispanics. You won't have Asians. You won't have Indian. Indian. You will never have that in one room. Even in 2016, and it's hard to believe, there are certain areas that are still segregated. Complete ignorance. But that's just the way life is. So coming to Grapevine was truly the best thing to happen to me because I learned that not all white people are bad. Just like not all white black people are bad. Because if you build these different stigmas, you, you attach these different stigmas to people and you build these different perceptions in people, you really miss out on really getting to know a great person. Because I don't judge anybody by their color. Because when I was living here in Grapevine, share this story in my new book, I had a stepfather who was very verbally and physically abusive. So my junior year, South, the end of my sophomore year, junior year, I moved in with a white family that became very instrumental to my growth. That are like my real parents today. That took me in and really showed me like, yo, this is what family is like. So what am I saying? That everybody that comes in your life should be judged by their character. They should be judged by what they stand for. What she's willing to stand for. She's not willing to compromise. She's not willing to give up her body in acceptance for attention. He's not willing to take a chance to take something or to do something just because he feel like this is going to like. You have to make these decisions. So I hope something I said today, guys, has truly inspired you. If you're on social media, I'm on Instagram under King J Barnett. It's all one word. You can follow me. I follow back at me. I try to reach out to as many as possible. And um, I post a lot of videos uh, on Inspiration Talk. Like we do this all over the world all over and it just gave me great privilege and I'm very humble to come back to where it started for me here in high school like you couldn't have told me and and within one year I've spoken at my college twice and spoken at my high school and that 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 has been one of the greatest accomplishment and fulfillment that I could have ever had and this means more than money to me because guess what money is currency you'll lose it you'll gain it but what I said to you today will stick forever. Because one day you'll be at some point in your life, you'll be like, yo, I remember that guy came and talked to me about being a king and being a queen and about really being in control of my territory, your mind. Like no music should influence you to do anything. You have that control. And if music does, if social media makes you feel some type of way about yourself, that means you're not ruling your kingdom. Because no man can take control over Jay unless I give him that. No girl should be able to say something about you and make you feel some type of way unless you give that power up. So define who you are. Define who you are. Love you. And then two, find people that like you for being you. So hopefully you guys uh, have a great rest of the day. I appreciate you guys for listening. Thank you for giving me your undivided attention.
great message today. Uh, just uh, I've heard heard bits and pieces through Facebook uh, on uh, his speaking, and uh, that's the first time I've heard him full. It was an outstanding uh, talk uh, related to the kids, and uh, you know when you keep a bunch of kids, high school kids, semi quiet and listening, it's it was amazing. Um, I thought it was very powerful, uh, motivational. I mean, a generation like this really needs to really find motivation and really find you know uh, words of wisdom. And, I mean, he's actually gone through this stuff. You know, he's actually uh, lived and, and had pretty uh, rough experiences. And you know, it's 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 really good to get a message from someone who has actually gone through it. So. That is really inspirational, and I love what he does, um, helping people, and just it really connects with me because I I can kind of connect with him and his past, and I've helped people just like he has stop cutting, stop doing drugs and it's inspiring me to build my confidence and do what he does, help other people more often.